The Indianapolis 500, long approving ground of automotive advances as well as America's top test of the nerves and strength of the big car drivers, sees a revolution in the making as this rear engine loaded Ford challenges the domination of the famous front engine Offenhauser. Its driver is Jimmy Clark, who finished second in one last year, and this year sits on the pole with the fastest qualifying time ever. At Speedway owner Tony Holman's traditional command, the 33 top qualifiers move out in the 500-mile dash. That'll be worth more than $250,000 to the winner. And here they come in the start of the 1964 Indianapolis 500. Clark grabs the lead, his low-slung, independently sprung Lotus really hugs those turns. The caution flag is out. Dense clouds of black smoke at the dangerous northwest turn tell the tale of disaster. Dave McDonald lost control, hit the inside wall, and ruptured his gas tank. Then spun into the path of Eddie Sachs, and both caught fire. Eddie Sachs, a great and colorful of veteran, is dead at the scene, and Dave McDonald dies a short time later at the hospital as the sport that bred them mourns their passing. The race is restarted, and only 26 are left to take the green flag. It looks like the end of the road for the Oppies as Bobby Marshman in another rear engine job takes the lead from Clark. But first, Marshman breaks down, and here's Clark limping off with a broken rear wheel. A.J. Boyd takes the lead in the Sheridan Thompson Special, a front engine Offenhauser. Roger Ward in a rear engine Oppie is literally burning up the track in an attempt to overtake Boyd. But Boyd's averaging better than 147 miles per hour, and he takes the checkered flag in the tragedy-marred 1964 Indianapolis 500 with a new record eclipsing the one set in 1963 by Pernelli Jones. A.J. Foyt, one of the winningest race drivers in the history of the game, wins the big one in 1964, hitting the jackpot to the tune of $253,000.